Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. In this video, I want us to have a look at a story carried out by NTV. NTV has carried out a story on Abdullahi Mohammed, seamless CEO. The man alleged to have brought the three Venezuelan nationals to Kenya. So we, before we proceed, let's have a look at this story by NTV. Well, Simless Limited and its chief executive officer and founder, Abdullahi Abdi Mohammed, were not well known to Kenyans until recently. But the recent fight between the IEBC and the DCI over the retention of Venezuela nationals resulted in some discoveries that threw Abdullahi Mohammed into the mix. NTV's Sidney Chazima now examines the man the DCI alleges invited the Venezuela nationals to the country. Abdullahi Mohammed the man whose name popped up in a series of revealing tweets by the Directorate of Criminal Investigations is the CEO of Simless Limited, a Nairobi-based tech company caught in the eye of the storm over the presence of three Venezuelan nationals in the country. The IEBC, while issuing a statement condemning the arrest of the three individuals last week, had stated that the three were employees of Smartmatic International. The company contracted to provide election technology for the August polls, but a rejoinder by the DCI would claim that the Venezuelans were neither IEBC nor Smartmatic staff, but had been in the country at the invitation of one Abdullahi Mohammed Abdi. This establishment along Dennis Spritt Road, dubbed the Iran House of Innovation and Technology, reportedly houses Abdullahi's firm in a co-shared working space arrangement. Security guards at this premise offered little to no information about the tenants of the co-shared working space, let alone the whereabouts of Abdullahi Mohammed. From the government business registry, Seamless Technologies has none of its directors or owners listed. A quick search on Abdullahi's LinkedIn profile reveals that he graduated from Peria University in India in 2009 with a degree in computer science and was an employee at Tospay Limited and offered consultancy services to the European Union Election Observation Mission during the 2017 general election. But even as the storm over the presence of the Venezuelan nationals continues to hit the headlines, questions remain abound on who Mohamed Abdullahi Simless Limited was acting on behalf of. Speaking to NTV, Abdullahi revealed, and I quote, Smartmatic had subcontracted me for the upcoming polls, and while the saga ensued, I recorded statements with the DCI and gave all corresponding documents that pointed to the working relations between Smartmatic, the IEBC, and the Venezuelan nationals and seamless technologies. Abdullahi adds that having cooperated with the DCI, I am surprised that the DCI chose to share partial information with the public that has since turned me into a person of interest. End of quote. Yes. From that story, I'm seeing the said man, that young man, Abdullahi Mohammed, saying his life is in danger. That's exactly what I'm seeing here. And he's stating that so far, he has recorded his statement and given out some details to the government. So the question begs, assuming that young man there goes the Musando way, who is most likely to benefit as a result of that. From where I sit, ladies and gentlemen, even though maybe let's just assume, let's just assume that that young man was being used by maybe IEBC or even some forces outside of IEBC to help in rigging this year's elections, I tend to believe that in the event the man goes the Musando way, then IEBC and those external forces who are using this man most likely are going to walk out scot-free and they might just continue with maybe their evil plans. But now that the man is fully in government's radar, the government can effectively use that man to expose all the evil plans that maybe IEBC 
all those external forces were planning to achieve using him. So that this young man, Abdullah Muhammad, should be given maximum security by the government. Let the government use this man to expose all the evil schemes, IEBC maybe, and external forces, again maybe, were planning to use, or rather to do, using this man. This man should be given maximum security. And I'm saying that because politics is never a straight line. The people who are intending on using this young man can actually turn against this man to make sure he is eliminated so that their evil schemes cannot be successfully exposed. The forces that were using this young man here can turn against this man to make sure he is el eliminated so that they, ca they cannot be exposed. So the government should make, make sure Abdullah Muhammad's security, he is given maximum security. And then second, the illegal pressure or the intimidations from AIC should be squarely directed on Wafula Chebukati and his team that was planning to interfere or to rig this year's presidential elections. Chebukati and his team and even the politicians who are planning on using Chebukati and this young man, the negative pressure should be aimed at them. Let the kitchen be too hot for them to survive. But not this young man, ladies and gentlemen. This is just an innocent person who maybe was just being used <laughs> trying to test waters. The government can equally use him to unfold everything that was being planned. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, in our earlier video today, I did a detailed analysis on the press statement that was released yesterday night, or rather today around 1 a.m. today. And that just exposed the lies and propaganda Wafula Chebukati has been treating Kenyans to. And from the press statement, we also saw that Wafula Chebukati is not addressing the real issues and concerns amongst a majority of Kenyans. As I talk right now, IBC has not come out in the open to explain to Kenyans exactly <laughs> what IBC knows about the three Venezuelan nationals who were arrested and detained. IBC is still quiet on that. I don't know whether they are still looking for, maybe they are still fabricating lies or not. I don't know where, why they are still silent on that. And again, if you look at IBC the way it is, sometimes back there was the intergovernmental committee that was sitting on election preparedness that brought almost all government institutions, including judiciary, we saw IBC or Fulache Bukati chickening out of that committee. An indication again that Wafulache Bukati does not also want to be transparent on his dealings at IEBC. He chickened out of that and is now coming out clearly why he might have chickened out of that committee. Wafulache Bukati does not want to be accountable. He does not want to be transparent. And you can see again here that IEBC cannot function on its own without the assistance of government. So all these things are just happening as a result of Wafula Chebukati's short-sightedness. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, let me leave it there for today. In case you are watching us for the very first time, but so far you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe give this video a like and to our fans and subscribers here i'm very much humbled very grateful
for the kind of support you are giving me here. God bless you. God bless Kenya. Any other person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment. Let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. And to any other person, that's the kind of analysis we do here. We don't beat about the bush. We go straight to the facts as they are. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya.